Hello everybody and welcome. It's Sunday, which means it's time once more for the MRL APAC division and joining me as always is Seb. Seb, how are you doing today? Good as always, good as always. Happy to be here. How are you, Unicorn? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Seb. And very excited to see how the final APAC, uh, the final uh, Zanvort race goes uh, here this evening. But we are just waiting on a few drivers. I don't know how many we've got today. There's a few drivers we missing 16, from the grid. So we do have 16. Just confirming that. But before we get into everything, let's have a look at the track that we are going to be racing around today. That's the wrong one. So let's not <laughs> have a look at the track. Let's have a look at the calendar instead. We've got... We've been to Australia, Bahrain, Vietnam, China. We've already had four races up until this point. Round five, obviously, the Netherlands this evening. And we have Spain next week, followed by Monaco. I know a few drivers will be dreading that one. Then Azerbaijan, another tight world circuit. Canada after that. And then things start to open up for the drivers. France, Austria, Britain, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Singapore, Russia, Japan, USA, Mexico, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. But with all that being said, we should just about be ready to get going here. It is half past. I think everyone mm -hmm. is all good to get going. Yeah, exactly. Just news on some driver swaps. T-Mac will be replacing Psycho at Haas for the remainder of the season. Eccentric will be replacing New Sleeps at Ferrari after his good performance for Mercedes last weekend. Uh, and... Uh, not so Masoom will be replacing Simdog at Renault. Just on the standings here, Mikhail still leads the championship on 86 points, 35 points ahead of Ben the Bear in second, who's after his rough start to the season in Australia and Bahrain, has clawed his way back with two wins and a faster slap to go with that. Panda sits in third, followed by Eccentric after his good performance last week at China. Captain of Gold sits in fifth on 23 points, six behind Eccentric, while Peter in that Red Bull on 22, followed by Remco Van Putin, his teammate, on 21 point. Cello in the McLaren follows in 8th, with Trin in 9th, combined in 10th, Emzo in 11th, Igor in uh, 12th, Shrimp and T-Mac, the Haas drivers, in 13th and 14th, which I believe is a mistake, because T-Mac has just... Actually, no, that's correct, sorry, my bad, because T-Mac did race last week. Unhell in the racing point in 15th, Stars in 16th, he'll be very disappointed with that. Only scoring points in Vietnam, looking good in China, and hasn't amounted to much. Yukio in 17th, Luckman 18th, Brown Guy in 19th, and not so Masoom in 20th. Well, and that's of your main drivers. Yeah, we're well, in the constructors. Now. Yeah, we're letting in down, as you say. Meanwhile, well, in the constructors, Alvatari lead to Mercedes, Williams, Red Bull, the Pirates, who are stolen 35 points from the 10 other constructors. Ferrari in 6 on 30 points, 27 points to McLaren in 7th, Alfa Romeo in 8th, Renault 9th, Haas 10th, and Racing Point 11. Yeah, it's been a tough start of the season for some of these teams, and you know, there's been a few just very strong drivers. I mean, Mikel, I got top of the standings for a reason, so he's just been dominant every single week that we've come here. It's been a month now since it started, four rounds done, and well... Right now, it looks like the only person who could possibly challenge him is Ben the Bear. But we were just speaking to him before this race, before qualifying, and he doesn't seem too confident around here, Seb. You know, he finally built that confidence back up over the past two races, and it seems that tonight things could come crashing back down for him. Yeah, exactly. We were, to we were talking to him before, and he did say he was having issues with the rear end. He was just wasn't very confident. He does have the pace to, to get away with that if he could just get some points, get a good podium here he could still take it to Mikhail in the following rounds but Mikhail's also someone who who's not too confident on this track as well so it should be interesting it's not a track where you'll see a lot of overtaking opportunities you only have really have the one into turn one but with that being said you can make some overtaking opportunities out of other corners one one being turn nine it opens up really wide from turn eight which is a six gear fast right hander and, you know, we might get some moves into turn 11, but that, that's a really tight corner. You get, tend to get a lot of incidents there. Same with turn 3, maybe turn 7 as well. If you get a very good run out of turn 3 on an opposing driver. But it, it all remains to be seen what happens. 
Yes, yeah, Stars first out of the pit lane here in the Alpha Tauri. And like you said, only 16 drivers on the grid today. And the only reserve being Wavy, I do believe, over in that racing point. But we'll go through who we do have. We've got T Mac, Remco Van Putin, Angel, Cello, combined YouTuber, Not So Masoom, Panda, Ben the Bear, the Brown Guy, Eccentric, Shrimp, Stars, Mikal, Emmons. Wavy and then Trint down in 16th place on the tiny tower right now as Stars lines up coming into the penultimate corner to start the first flying lap of the session. Yeah, so it's all about building up to all about building up to that final lap right here. Just want to get a banker in, build some confidence. Breaking just before the 50 meter board for turn one, get down to third and just short shift your way up through the gears to find some traction. Turn two, two now, fifth gear. Get to left as far right as possible. It's very hard to do out of turn two, but you've got to find a way to do it if you want a great run out of turn three. Slingshot your way through four, five, and six. Try to take as smooth and short a line as possible. Scan shift one gear for turn seven. Try and stay confident through. There's a lot of time to gain. Clip the inside curve for turn eight and just break very late for turn nine. You can break later than you think and that it looks as well. That wide entry, you can even get an early turn in and you might be able to take a lot of that curve on the inside. Turn 10, just short shift your way through it, get that car to the left for turn 11, or you'll be riding a lot of this inside curb, and then trying to set yourself up for turn 12, he's just invalidated a lap time, that's not what you want. But it's early on in this session, so he can get away with it. Yeah, plenty more time to create that. Remco Van Puren right now is going to be the first person to set a lap time if it all goes well, and apparently he is running with a broken pedal, so he could be... Hindered today in his performance, currently seeing one point behind his teammate in the championship and PTR isn't here this afternoon, so we'll have to see how the Red Bull fares. There it is, a 108.5 to open up the timing. Not so much soon, goes on 109.3. Then we have Trin on 109.8 and there goes Wavy reserving with a 109.1. You just expect competitive times to sit in that 107 bracket. That's where you're the top of the field should be for this this qualifying session. Right now the time's just tumbling down. Not going to be anything too exciting at the moment, but good guys like Mikhail and uh, Mikhail or Ben the Bears who set a time. He's set a time. He's on a 1087. But yeah, like I said, guys like Mikhail yet to set a time. Yeah. See how he goes. Yeah, 108.7, but it is on those medium tyres, Seb. So that is a pretty competitive lap time. Given the tie compound, Cello just hops yeah, exactly. into P5 on 109.2, and here comes Mikel for his first flying lap of the session. And it's not going to be as quick as I think we thought it would be a 110.6. Definitely a mistake somewhere. That is uncharacteristic for Mikel. I expect him up there with Ben the Bear. Oh, the team actually started a lap, as you can see. Got, nice. his, yeah, got his seat last week. Was reserved last week as well. Got six points, finished three seven. Good outing for him. Yeah, he's got that seat. See what he can do with it. Yeah, currently the only driver out on a flyer as he comes through turn six and seven. Now into turn eight. And like you said, he's been doing pretty strong so far, and now that he has got this full time seat, he can really start to start to pick up points and well, consistent drives and consistent attendance here. Could see. You know, a newcomer, you know, we've only had four races. That's obviously a, a maximum of 100 points, or 104 if you want to count fastest laps up for grabs, but still, there's a lot of competitive positions in the Drivers' Championship that are still there that could really just be taken with one win. You know, yeah, exactly. you know, like P7, P6. I mean, even even if we just look at Red Panda, he's he's been very consistent, but he's hasn't shown the pace to necessarily win a race, whereas guys like Remco... And Peter, who hasn't, is not racing tonight or the afternoon or morning, wherever it is for, for you viewers. They have the, they have some pace to get a very good podium and score some good points. It's just they tend to get in some trouble, and that's guys like Panda who have been consistent, who's not racing today. That's oh, why Panda is racing today. So Peter not racing. Um, tend to, it can, you can really jump some guys, but consistency is very key, as Panda and Mikhail have shown. All drive for both race and qualifying. Yeah, the McLaren now then ends. 
coming through into the sector two and about to round it out down this DRS straight down into turn 12 where we've seen plenty of action so far this week and I imagine today will be no different as the McLaren flies into the final sector through the penultimate corner. No ERS usage through here but there it is straight back on the ERS saving it for this sort of run down to the line. And what's it going to be for the McLaren? It's P9 on 109.804. Decent lap there, just given the times out combined as per usual, doing that one lap on the mediums, it's something we see very often from him, just getting it out there, trying to get that car going, get a rhythm for the track, get a feel for it, maybe save an extra pair of softs in case of a late safety car in, the, in a race. Interesting from Unhel, Wolf's on a flyer, but didn't really look like he was pushing around the final corner and he just tapped the wall, so... Yeah. He's lost an end plate well, via it. No, yeah. He's got no, yeah, like we said, lost an end plate from it. He's just got 94% ERS, which means he's somewhere along the lap, he's just given up. Very very early, you'd think so, considering the fact that he has a lot of ERS here. ERS hard to really uh, come, come by in the race, especially if you use it a lot early on. Very hard to save, very hard to manage. You gotta pick your moments when you use it. And you, know, you really want to use the DRS of other cars to. Just try and save some ERS when you are in a nice drag race with some, some very good races. Indeed, Wavy right now in the other racing point. He's just enabled DRS down this other back straight and currently sitting in P4. He is the only reserve on today's grid. And we'll see if he can improve upon that 109.1, get himself into the 108. Only two drivers so far, Seb, into that 108 territory and a big snap from the rear of the racing point as he comes through the final corner. He's going to round out the lap, though, and it is a 5,000th of a second improvement for him. Just, you could you could tell when he went through um, turn 13, he just clipped that inside curb and he was trying to get on the power a bit too early with that. Once you clip that inside curb, you get a bit of understeer through the car and where the car handles, it just pushes you wide and got to be careful not to go too wide on the exit of that curb while as you invalidate your lap. Yeah, it's just, as you said, just gets that little wiggle. Cello, we'll have to see if he's a bit more successful coming through the final sector. He's in the McLaren. He's just behind Wavy. 109.2 is his current best time. Not using any ERS, but is he just reserving it for this final? But he is as he comes through this bank curb. What can he put That's on the right. table? Oh, it's going to be straight into the pits. Yeah. Yeah, it's just very weird when he was taking that wide line. I was about to say, you just you normally keep it really tight down the inside, just save time and uh, just travel the least amount of distance throughout the track. So, Ben the Bear, he's on a flyer, and this time he's on the soft compound tyres. He's coming down through this back DRS straight. He is four tenths up already through the first two sectors. What can he do through the final one? This will be provisional pole as he comes through the penultimate corner using just enough of that exit curb and through the final corner. Very nice line from him, but he's going to come straight into the yeah. pits despite the good lap time. Yeah, I, he ran out of ERS very early. Uh, I'd just like to point that out. He ran out through the middle of turn 14, which is you normally want it to run out about halfway between turn 14 and the uh, checkered flag, so you know that extra bit of power down that main straight. But I wonder if he's just thinking of mediums here. Looking at the look at you know, these competitors' times in this APAC division, I wonder if he's just thinking that mediums might be the way to go. Softs tend to overheat a lot around this track. You have to manage them a fair bit if you want to uh, maintain some sort of pace on them. The medium tyres are probably the best tyre to drive on, but tend to not feel great either and the hards or the rear tyres and the hards just feel like you're driving on ice all the time is Trindus Is that Trin that's just disqualified for you? Yeah, yeah Trin's just been disqualified I don't know what's what, Angel also hopped into P2 while that was going on but yeah I'm not quite sure what's happened I think it said parked in a dangerous location for the Alfa Romeo So She's just letting a car by it We've seen it before I think 
We saw it in a practice race pre-season where if you spin coming out of turn, someone spun out coming out of turn eight and just you know letting people pass in the game disqualifies you from being parked in the location. So this track pretty tough on those sort of limits, but uh, eccentric. eccentric is probably. out. He's crashed. Turn seven. Yeah, he's probably just lost the rear end. That's why he's in the right hand side of the wall. Just ask too much of the rear tires as you do sometimes and they re overheat sending it through turn uh, seven flying the throttle down too much you tend to get especially around this track you need a over series setup just like most tracks to uh, really really get the most out of a lap time and the you know, has not ended well had a great race at china didn't he last week but he, this week hasn't started off so well for him has it yeah, definitely not how you want to come into something like this, especially like you said, after a good week you're coming in, hopes are high, obviously a new track, completely different scenario, but once you've got that confidence from the previous week to be crashing out in qualifying, it's going to bring you straight back down. Mikau now up one sector, second in sector one, so on for a much better lap time, and like you said earlier, we were not expecting a 110.6 from him, and I don't think we're going to see that again here from the Alpha Tower as he barrels down towards turn 12 taking all of that inside curbing very nicely done and then just keeping the line super tight to the inside as he comes through to the penultimate corner again using as much as the outside curb as he needs to within track limits and then just the traction around that final corner here he goes to the line and it's p1 for mikhail 108.3 for the alpha tauri and that is much more like it for the Australian driver. His main rival in the championship, though, Ben the Bear, is back out on a flyer on soft. So is it now time that he's thought that, you know what, I'm not going to start on the mediums and I just want to start as high up as possible. And track position here is everything, Seb. Yeah, exactly. Track position is everything. Like I said, very hard to overtake. Only real spot is turn one. But you might be able to see some cheeky overtakes in turn three, seven, nine, and maybe 11. You don't have a big enough... DRS straight from turn 10 to 11 to have anything uh, to overtake with, but Ben the Bear just, just says, hey Mikael, I'm the Ben the Bear, who are you? Four tenths faster. And he said he was, uh, wasn't feeling confident with the car, and well, he's just gone and done that. And Remco as well, a 108.2, so Mikael, from provisional pole all the way down to the second row now, a lot of these guys coming out all cylinders in these final five minutes, and Cello, he's just started a lap time, 109.2 to his name. Seems pretty unlikely that we would see him hop into the top spot, but there's definitely time to be found in these final five minutes. The track's at its most optimum, and we'll see what the McLaren can do. Everyone else now starting to hop out on out laps. The brown guy as well, he's flying in the Williams, just behind. He's down his time by thousands of a second. Sorry, a hundredth of a second, I should say. It's not going to do his confidence too much. He might ask too much of the car in the future, but we'll see what happens. He's got to really find that time and just find that rhythm in the last couple of corners here. Down into turn 12, through into 13, and keeping it nice and tidy through there as he comes towards the final two corners in the McLaren. Through 14, now onto the infamous 15. And again, keeping it very tight to the inside. Almost too tight there. Very close to the wall, but it is a small improvement. That will put him up into P8 ahead of the Haas of Shrimp. Brown guy improves as well. He's up into P10. Yeah, that's true. Just looking at all the grid. We've got a nice, decent spread here. We've got a, we've got a, we've got a 5 tenth gap from P6, that is Eccentric, who crashed early in the session at, at turn 7, all the way down to uh, Red Panda, and P14, who won't be happy with his time, that's for sure. He expects a lot out of himself, and he definitely can bring it, judging from the fact that he's scored points in every race so far this season. Yeah, and scoring points in every race is just exactly how you get, you know, those... Well, he's P4 in the standings right now, and that's exactly sort of where you'd expect someone like that. He hasn't won a race, but at the same time, he's just scored points week after week, and they add up. They really do, and when you don't attend races, that's when you just sort of start losing that edge in the championship. And it looks yeah. like Ems has dropped this lap here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, ex ex exactly what you said, you know, you just got to slowly chip away at it. That's what Mick has been saying the past two weeks we've spoken to him. Vietnam and China, just got to slowly chip away, just get those points, get those podiums, so that when Ben the Bear, you know, has, has issues or makes a mistake himself, he can just capitalize and maintain that championship lead. That championship lead is dimming, though. You have to expect that. It only is round four at the moment, but it's going to be a lot of pressure on Mick to maintain this good performance that he's... That he's, that he's had so far in the first four rounds. Yeah, Mikau now, he's lining up to start a flyer. A lot of drivers on dropped flyers, invalidated flyers, just... Some people just not seeming to get to grips with the circuit fully. Mikau now is flying. Remco Van Putin ahead of him. He's retired in the pit lane. He is satisfied with the 108.2. Can Mikau find the time here? Get himself ahead of the Red Bull. Ben's flying as well in the Mercedes, not too far behind the Alpha Tauri. And he'll be looking to approve of one on 107.9. Maybe going for the lap record. I don't think it's been beaten yet. I believe Freeware was a 107.8 in Tier 1. It's very possible for Ben the Bear. I'll tell you what. But yeah, right now I'm looking out for stars at the moment in Sector 2. He could be giving Mikhail just a little toe. Maybe he might get a toe from Mikhail when he starts his lap. Oh, he likes to call himself the Prince of Queensland. But, uh, let's see. It doesn't look like he'll get that toe. Well, into the final couple of corners for him. Can he find what needs to be about two tenths? That was a massive snap into the wall, and that is not how he wants to go into this race. Oh, Ben's had an issue as well. He's in the wall, down in the same place. But here's the thing, right? Remco, Remco's finished his, finished his qualifying. Stars, uh, note Somasum and Shrimp and Wavy are still on laps, I believe. But I don't think those guys are really going to challenge Ben the Bear, who's going to get pole now by the looks of it. Well, this could mean that Stars here with three drivers, you know, retired ahead and not so Somasum, I believe he's finished for the qualifying session. Stars here could be on for a nice starting position if he can chain these sectors together, get a good lap in here in the dying moments of the session. And he's one and a half tenths up. That would see him potentially ahead of Angel if he can get through these last couple of corners. Whether he'll get Mick out and Remco as well seems a little bit unlikely for the other Alpha Tari driver, but this could be exactly what he needs as he crosses the line. Where's he going to put him? P4. Oh. 8.6. Snatched it from him, but Soom has a lap. No, he doesn't. He's six tenths down. He's sorry, six seconds down on his lap. He's, well, he's backed out. Wavy's backed out as well. Oh, that looks like that's qualifying. Geez, Stars has snatched that from Angel and Soom, hasn't he? Yeah, very, very nicely done from him in the avatar. He puts them both in the second row of the grid. A nice lockout for the team who does sit at the top of the constructors in this division and it doesn't look like anyone's going to challenge them here today only one red bull driver here and only one mercedes as well but it is ben the bear on pole the only driver with a 107 but both he and mikhail having problems here in qualifying and that could spell bad news for them in the race as we just wait for the last couple of drivers i think it's wavy just getting put in the garage for the racing point squad Yeah, what's interesting here is Stars, who's a rocket launcher off the start. You know, he he could cause some problems for Remco and Ben the Bear at the front. He might he might just yield to Mikhail though. We'll see. But it's a short run from the start to turn one. But there also can be some incidents there, especially if we see people go three wide. Well, there is the qualifying standings. Ben the Bear, three tenths clear of Remco Van Putin in P2 after Mikel failed to complete that final lap, crashing into the wall on the inside. His teammate Stars joins him on the second row, the other Avatari, a 108.6. Then, not too far behind him, Angel in the racing point. Not so much zoom in the Renault starts P6. Then we have Eccentric in the Ferrari leading. A very tight train of drivers on these 109s, 0.1s, 0.2s. It starts with Wavy, Cello, Shrimp, Panda, Emmons. Combined Juba, 
T-Mac, Brown Guy, and Trin after getting DSQ'd from the session. And I don't think we still quite know why, but yeah, pretty unfortunate for him in that Alfa Romeo. As we load in, it's pretty overcast. I don't know if we actually got a weather report from any of the drivers, but it does look a little bit cloudy here. We haven't seen rain here. We're expecting it all throughout the rest of the week, but we haven't seen any rain yet. Yeah, exactly. It was said to be dry, but it should remain that way. It just looks like it'll be overcast for the whole race. But yeah. Just, you said, I think you said before that Remco had broken pedals or something, and he's going to qualified P2, didn't you? Yeah, he, someone did say in the chat that Remco, around his home race as well, struggling with a broken pedal, so looks like he's still going to come out here fighting. But I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a great effort. You know, we do that on broken pedals, but you know, you don't you don't earn points for quality. Oh, I've said it once, you know, means I've probably said it a thousand times. You don't earn points for quality. Points all come in the race, and that's where it all matters. Yeah, exactly. And well, a broken pedal could mean you know inconsistent lap times, or you know, even if it breaks, I don't know if it's a brake or a throttle pedal. If it's a, a brake pedal, that could just spell disaster if he just flies into a wall at one point because he can't brake. Depends on what happens, but it is his home race, and he'll be looking to do well. But it's Ben on pole, Remco in P2, the two Alpha Tarries of Mika and Stars on the second row. Then Unhel, not so much soon, Eccentric, Wavy and Cello in eighth and ninth have both just been DSQ for the formation lap, so their ties will be. Absolutely freezing on the start. Then Shrimp rounds out the top 10. Then Panda on the mediums. Emmins on the hards. Then Combined Junchi with the only driver outside the top 10 on softs. Then T Mac on the mediums. The brown guy on hards. And Trin starts on the mediums in P16. And before we get started, thank you everyone for tuning in. You're about to see the start of round 5 of the APAC division here at MRL. Same time every Sunday. And a big thank you to our partners as well. Next Level Racing, brilliant sim racing rig manufacturer. They've got entry level all the way through to advanced level rigs. So make sure to give them a chat out in the chat. If you just type in exclamation mark NLR, it'll pop up for you there. Freeware getting it done. But these guys getting ready, Seb, to form this grid up and get racing underway here for round five. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, getting ready. It's just, that's a massive gap between Eccentric and Soma Soom. That's not going to do the nerves any good if you've got some nervous drives on the grid, but it's a short run to turn one, and it's a short braking zone as well, so we could see some broken front wings on the back of some cars if guys aren't cautious, especially if we're looking at P6 backwards and get pretty clogged up into turn one. But over to you. Well, here we go, everyone's onto that grid, and the Red lights, three, four, five red lights are lit. And away we go. And like you said, Stars, a brilliant starter. And already past his teammate up the inside. One of the McLarens into the wall. It looks like it's Cello. But Stars already into P3 here. Mick out under threat from Unhel as well. As we've got a safety car for that incident between... Well, it looks like it's just Cello who's crashed into the wall off the start. Don't know if he collected anyone else there. But there is a big lot of a very lot of quick damage. safety car, I'll say that much. Wavy's lost some wing. Wavy's lost some wing on his left side. Uh, everyone else looks fine apart from that. At the moment. Yeah, that, that's, that's a very quick safety car for a relatively minor incident. But yeah, Stars just launches it off off the, off the starting grid. He gets past his teammate. Not sure if they will swap positions later on the race. But, you know. Anything can happen. Yeah, so I just been, wondering... I'll tell you what, this has been... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I just wondering whether, you know... Cello or Wavy, I don't know. I can't remember who was ahead on the grid, but... It, it would have been Wavy, actually. If, so... I'm trying to work out how those two would have come together if that's what's happened here, because... Johnny not know Cello was the one in the wall. You've got to expect that... You know, Wavy would have hit him, and then... Some sort of exchange going on down between Eccentric and not so Masum, and... You don't want to see that on the safety car, and that can confuse everyone. This is the drivers yeah, not supposed to overtake under the safety car. Uh, looks like they've got that sorted out yeah. between them. Yeah. yeah. I was just about to say when I cut you off that this has been a 
very anticlimactic start as I think it was a car that was about to pit and then didn't I think it was a huss of shrimp like across the pit lane line. Yeah, that's that, that, that might not be good for him. But yeah, like I said, just very anticlimactic start. But stars are just rocketed off the lawn looking to attack Remco Van Putin and then he's got Wavy and Cello with their broken front wings and then all of a sudden the safety car out before we even get to turn two, so the race just dies down a bit, but it's about to launch up again once that McLaren and Racing Point catch up to the pack again. Yeah, I'm having a look now. The time and time is still a little bit confused with the order, it would seem. I think it's sorting itself out now. Ben holds on to P1. Remco still in P2. Then Stars and Mick out. Exchange for P3 and 4. Then Unhel, not so soon. And Eccentric holding on to 5th, 6th and 7th. Then Shrimp's up 2. Panda's up 2. T-Mac up 4 places into the points. Emmins has gained 1. Trin's gained 4 off of the start of the game. DSQ to qualify, so he'll be a little bit happier coming into this. Now the Brown guy's up 2. And then combined Chichi Jr. who hopped into the pit lane for fresh hearts. He is in 14th place. Then we have Wavy who's pitted for softs in 15th. And Cello as well on the hards. They both have lost seven positions as Ben gets ready to restart the grid here. Yeah, Ben's got to go as late as possible, you'd think. Not a, not a, not a big straight, but it's a decently long run. Just got to make sure he catch, catches Renko when he's in one of those waves. Well, here he goes. Oops, but and... like Renko's going to be waving anymore. Oh, there's a... Penalty at the back, that's Cello and Wave. And no exchanges so far. Trin might have a look at the inside of ends. All those there goes eccentric and not so over soon side by side to the opening sector. And the Renault, no damage on it, but a little bit wide now, locking up, coming down into turn four. Still, the only position to be changed now combined YouTuber and Wavy. They're going side by side, Wavy on those fresh shots, really working out for him. As he picks up P14. He got absolutely rocket launch out of turn three. Made, made quick quick work of combined to P14. He's looking at looking at brown guy as well now in the middle sector. Yeah, the one reserve on this grid looks up the inside coming through turn 11. And this would be an exceptional overtake enabled already. Uh, we said it earlier that overtake not very... Generous around here. Late on the brakes on the brown guy. An excellent defense from the Williams driver. And, well, Wavy, if he's going to start using ERS like that, he really needs to secure these moves because at the end of this race, he will have an empty tank when it comes to the battery. And that's really not what we want. Ben sets the fastest lap. Obviously, the first lap that we haven't had a safety car on it. Here goes Wavy again, looking at the rear of the Williams. This time, it's looking a little bit more cut and dry from around the outside. The brown guy, late on the brakes again, though. The outside we've seen it can be very powerful around this first corner, but it's not going to work out for Wavy just yet. He's already used half of his battery. The brown guy now not taking the optimal line into turn four. Can he find a better line out of it? Or is Wavy here going to try and look past through sector one? This is a very tricky place to overtake. But he's dancing all over the gearbox of this Williams, and he really wants to get past. You can see he's just holding up up through these twisty corners. Yeah, exactly. In the space of two sectors, he's lost 40% in. ERS was brown guys barely used 20% of his and brown guys just got that superior superior straight line speed even though wavy has those fresh softs over him on those compared to those fresh hards it's not able to dispatch him yet it's great defending by brown guy I was really impressed with his defensive move into turn one just to be able to hold on to that position at breaking wavy and maintaining position and yeah, meanwhile Ben the bear at the front well he said he wasn't confident to us but well, I don't know what confidence looks like for Ben, but look how far ahead he is. As not so much, very slow coming out of the final corner, almost letting T Mac pass there. Wavy and the brown guy finally exchanging, but can the brown guy be later on the brakes down into turn one? He can. A little bit of contact between the two. Ooh. The brown guy hooked onto the curb, manages to keep it pointing in the right direction, but that's not how he wants to concede the place. And Cello's into the pits. He is down into P16 and. The grid already starting to split up as everyone gets settled in this race. Yeah, bad to worse from Cello. Just you know, pits for that second time this race. Meanwhile, I believe Soma Soom has just dropped down due to a mistake or something. That's why I've been going so slow. 
you wouldn't expect him to be going so slow in that part of the track that he was, but... Mistake happened, and now he's just going to find a way to build that rhythm up again. Get, in, get into a nice space mentally, so he can really, really make some gains later in this race. Yeah, meanwhile, the rest of this group is starting to split up a little bit. We've seen some trains here over the course of the week. Angel now he's lost DRS on Mikko ahead. That could open up the door for Eccentric, who looks around the outside very late on the brakes from the Ferrari. Looking around the outside on these soft commentaries. Contact Whoa. between the two. He manages to keep it out of the wall. But Stewards will be having a look at that one. And now Eccentric needs to be Come careful on. from Shrimp behind. There's a lot of rubbing going on there between the two. It just looked like uh, Eccentric just wasn't given maybe enough room on the exit. Maybe he just got lost a bit of traction. I didn't have a great angle of that off board. But meanwhile, Panda started P11, I believe, on those medium tyres, sitting nice and pretty in P8. Could make some good work, good, good work on these medium tyres right here, especially with those softs and them just getting that bit more hotter, attracting a lot more heat than the mediums and a lot harder to manage. Could see him make some moves in the next swimming lap. Yeah, especially now that Eccentric sort of dropped back a little bit to Shrimp, we could see the Haas attack the Ferrari, but not like that, taking way too much of the outside curve. That's caused his rear end to slip out, and there goes the Williams straight pass into P7. We might see a move here from the Renault of not so Masoom into Turn 1. It's not going to be for him right now. These softs dying out a little bit. We've got an exchange going on for P11. It's the McLaren of M's next to in there in the Alfa Romeo and it is an end plate missing on the front of the McLaren it looks like Trin might be missing one as well same on that right hand side no he has actually got that full front wing so Trin right now should have all of the advantage here better tyres better aero and he's still been overtaken here by the McLaren so very very impressive driving from Emmons I think, I think that might frustrate Emmons to be able to be faster than someone else on medium compound tyres when you're on hards. You know, also having a broken front wing, it just means he could have been so much more faster. He could be really somewhere in the middle of these point scoring guys at the moment. But meanwhile, I got a battle for P9 between Soma Soom and Tmac going at it again on the run through 14. Down to turn one. Soma Soom has the RS. He's got the inside line, and it's as easy as a like down the inside of T-Mac on this main straight. And behind them, Trent has just soared straight past the McLaren of Emmons as well in a similar fashion. And Emmons might have Wavy behind him. Five lap old soft combat tyres. Wavy had a look around the outside of turn four. Not a traditional overtaking spot, but <laughs> obviously Emmons just closing the door. Wavy just about getting that nose backed out enough as to avoid sending himself into the wall. As they come through the second sector now, and Evans with that damage, hard compound ties. You've got to expect Wavy will be trying to make another move here. Neither one has too much ERS. Emmons 20%, Wavy 30%, and you don't really get it back around this track, so we'll have to see how they fare. Trin now sort of building up a little bit of a gap to the McLaren behind, and you can see that Emmons just struggling a little bit with the damage as Wavy not quite getting the exit he needs. Mikko and Stars have exchanged as well. I'm not sure what happened there yeah. because Stars seems to be a little bit off the back of Mikko now. I don't know when that happened. And here goes Wavy. An excellent run down into turn one. Coming around the outside of the McLaren. They're going to go side by side into the corner. Emmins just has enough space on an inside line but it's not going to be enough to defend the move and very very nicely done from the reserve of Wavy here. Yeah exactly. It's like they touched a bit in the at the apex of the corner, but able to keep it together. and some nice hard racing between the two. And yeah, as we said before, Mikko getting past Stars, I believe. But Stars tends to, tends to lose confidence when his tyres drop off the cliff, and that, that might be what we're seeing here. He was 1.1 off Remco, but maybe Mikko's just made some great gains on Remco, and Stars is just 
let him through to allow him to get there. As Mickey has gained about a tenth and a half on him in the past lap. Yeah, really catching. You've got to wonder whether that is down as a result of Ramco's you know, hardware problems. We've you know, been informed that he has got that broken Panda pedal. Panda Accenture going to go at it now down to turn one. You see a move. Panda can be quite aggressive. He's looking down the inside, but not today for now. Lap 10. Might have to wait for lap 11, but he, he is all over the back of Eccentric. The soft tires looking like they might be going right about now on that Ferrari. Red Panda looking like he's pretty lively at the moment. Yeah, this is exactly where the mediums are going to start to come alive. Mikau, meanwhile, is really, really tight to the rear of this Red Bull. The sister team coming in hot for P2. And Mikau, not the best of starts in the early stage of the race, but now as the tyres start to die out, Seems to be finding a little bit of pace compared to his competitors as he comes down onto this long back straight. Remco, less DRS than the Australian. And I'm not finding anything down into turn 12. But I'm sure it won't be long until we see these guys into the pits. Probably a couple of laps for the soft hards. Whether we see anyone stretch for the soft mediums can be a little bit of a risky strategy. But no one into the pit lane as of yet. Meanwhile, Red Panda and Eccentric again. Red Panda's closer this time. Going to get the run down to turn one. Looking around the outside of Eccentric of this Ferrari. Looking, looking, looking. But having to back out Eccentric with a great defensive move. Just breaking that bit later than Red Panda. Red Panda still looking through three and two and three. And then he's just going to have to back out and wait again. we go through turn four. And meanwhile, Mikau actually dropping off the back of Remco through sector one just that little bit. Bit of a slow start to this lap four, and we are on lap 11, so these softs will start to be feeling pretty rough. And we've got to remember they were preserved in the opening stages as well, where traditionally you'd have, you know, cars really going at one another. They were all saved by that super early safety car, which came up within about 20 seconds of the race starting. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Now Panda again on the rear of Accenture. We haven't seen him go for a move into turn 12, and we're not going to see him go for a move into turn 12 this lap either. But he is about to gain a huge number of positions based upon the pit stops. Look at that run at turn 13. An absolute launch out of there. This should be the time that he's able to get Eccentric. It's such a such a hard place to overtake though. Will he do it? No, Eccentric pulls into the pits instead. Well, Pan now up into P6. And this is the first position he'll gain from that pit stop Eccentric. Going for the soft hard strategy. Pretty well timed as well. And... He'll get a lot of clear air as well as it looks like a combined YouTuber and Emmons are going side by side. Both drivers on the hard compound tyre and combined YouTuber around the outside. Very, very nicely crafted move from the Schooneria. It just looks like... Just just watching watching Emmons is just, it's just tough to watch because it looks like he's got point scoring pace. But that, that front wing is really causing him a lot of harm. In terms of his race pace, it's a great, nice move by Combine, taking advantage of that broken wing that Amins has and going for that move around the outside of turn one. He just made it swift as well. No mucking around from him. Now, are any of the top drivers going to blink, come into the pit lane? Ben the Bear says no. Will either of these guys, Mikau, looks like he Ooh. is going to dart into the pit lane. And he's going for an undercut here, Seb. Yeah, exactly. It's a very short pit lane. You lose about 17 seconds from from memory. So short. It's just, yeah, the, the undercut can be massive here as well, as long as he doesn't get caught in any traffic, which doesn't look like he will. Looks like he'll get a nice bit of clean air between T-Mac and Trin at the moment, the Haas and the uh, Alfa Romeo drivers. But it's interesting to see what Remco does. Will he pit straight away and answer straight away? Will he just hold out and maybe even try that soft medium strategy you were talking about before? Yeah, the, the hards now will take him comfortably to the end. So, we'll have to see where he comes out. Like you said, he's got this lovely bit of clean air between the Hasatimek and Trin as well. It's just a case of, when does Remco get put out? The pace on the Sots was definitely dying out. But, it should still be around the similar pace to the Haas, But it is fresh compound for Mikau. And we'll just have to see... 
What happens? Is Ben the Bear gonna come into the pit lane? He's not. Is Renko gonna follow what Mikau did? And it doesn't look like he is in that trajectory and he's not. So Renko now is staying thing. out. Yeah, here's the thing, right? Mikau was two tenths faster in the second sector than Remco just in this one lap. So starts pits. See where he comes out. He should come out just in front of Trin, you'd think. But yeah. You expect Remco to just go along at this point. He's not answering straight away. So his 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 game his his uh chance at P2 will, will be played uh, later on in the race with Mikau. Rather than right now. But Mikko does have to make way of team act here. Yeah, and it shouldn't be too, too difficult. But team act on those mediums, they won't have died out quite as much as the soft have as Eccentric and not so Masoom going wheel to wheel through the first sector. The Ferrari not finding a way past the Renault in the opening section of the lap. Is he going to try and find it as they come through? towards the entrance to sector two it doesn't look like it's going to work for him here we go Mikau and T-Mac they have exchanged and it's Mikau now up into p6 for the Alpha Tauri squad and he really is on a charge both of the other leaders Ben and Remco into the pit lane Ben onto the hards so not going to stretch out for that well Remco, Remco is, is. Interesting. The confidence to make these last I mean, he has made he has made these uh these soft tires last 14 laps, so uh, there is a chance he could make make those uh, medium tires last 22. Well, that's Mick out. Laps. And yeah, that's side by Mikau. side on exit, and he's got him. Wow, well, that's big. He's <laughs> Remco needs to make, needs to make quick work of Mick out here. He needs to really get a move on if he wants any chance of getting P2 from him. Well, the last time we saw Remco go for a very, very bold strategy like this, he didn't think his tires were going to go to the end, bar rain, and well, he picked up a puncture in that race, and that didn't exactly end well for him, so now that he's behind Mikau, he needs to get past on these mediums, and the socks are preserved under a safety car for him. Now on these mediums, if he doesn't get a safety car, he's not going to have that luxury again, and... Yeah. Well, he could be in real punch of territory towards the end of this. Yeah, I completely forgot about it as well, which means his, his soft tyres technically lasted 12 laps instead of 14, so that that is actually pretty big. I'd be surprised if he can actually make them last. That is a massive stretch. I mean, I, at this point, I'd, I'd just sit behind Mikau and just wouldn't push too hard. Well, but Ben, not sitting behind anyone, picks off Panda, retakes P1 pretty much instantly. And so far, this race, very, very comfortable for him. Unhel, he's going to come out just behind combined YouTube. But he's gone for the mediums to the end as well. Yeah. I mean, you'd think Ben the Bear was playing games with the rest of the field after, after what he said to us earlier. <laughs> just before, about 40 minutes ago. Combined YouTube, huh? Unhel's just snuck back up the inside. I hate to interrupt, but what a move through the opening sector. You don't see moves through there every day. But he made it look super, super easy. And combined is a very respectful driver, so there's some moves you can pull against some drivers and some you can't. And you know what you're getting with combined. He is very respectful. He will give you the space if, if you make yourself known and you don't do anything rash, he will, will give you that space. Remco, still DRS on the back of Mikau, but nothing doing for the Red Bull on these mediums. And, well, if he doesn't have the pace now, he's certainly not going to have the pace at the end of this race when those tyres are a good 20 laps old. So, the driver at his home Grand Prix... The Dutch fans won't be too confident in this strategy coming out of the Red Bull garage, I don't think, as we are approaching that halfway point in the race. Yeah, it's just they both have the same amount of ERS as well. You'd, you'd think that Remco would have less ERS with the fact that he's behind Mikau on softer compound tyres, but it's just not making anything of it. Maybe Mikau's just finally found that that rhythm, that zone, and he's just, just nailing in laps at the moment. Maybe Remco just can't touch him. 
Well, he's certainly doing something right in that Alfatari. The undercut there has worked absolutely beautifully for the Australian. As we watch Angel, can he pick off another driver here? These fresh mediums, they're not working out for Remco, but they are working out for the racing point. Not quite enough space up the inside through the final corner, but out of the final corner, the racing point is going to find all the pace he needs with DRS. And he picks up another position. Shrimp around the ad side behind on combined YouTuber. The P10. Who's going to come in in front? Looks like they both get good exits. Who's going to back out through turn three? Neither of them combined does, in fact. And he just lets Shrimp through on those fresher hards. Sorry to cut you off there. Shrimp just making work of combined. Yeah, this grid really starting to heat up. We've got battles popping up all over the shop. And... Oh, there's drivers going at it everywhere. Stars and Trin, they're not too far apart. And Trin right now, 17 lap old mediums. Those are going to be feeling absolutely awful for the Alfa Romeo right now. As Mikel and Remco, they've caught the back of Panda, who's also on 17 lap old mediums. He's definitely going for that medium soft strategy. And we'll have to see how that works out for Panda. Currently sitting in P3 in the standings and... Well, he could see a lot of positions gained. He's, put, he's staying on the inside. He's got Mikau on the outside. He's got Remco up the inside. Can the Red Bull driver find his way through on the Williams here? Or can Panda cause a real headache for the Dutch driver at his home Grand Prix? It's not. Remco just about squeezes through as well, but he's lost time to Mikau. And can Mikau now break DRS to the Dutch driver behind? Great, great, great move by Remco. He really needed to do that. Opportunistic move, just got down the inside of Panda. Panda kind of expected it, was able to semi-cover it off, but just didn't have that traction to fight through turns two and three. Yo, you can't expect too much traction out of 18 lap old mediums. and I don't think it'll be too, too long until we start seeing him pull into the pit lane. Maybe two, maybe three laps at most until he comes into that yeah. pit lane. You'd have to expect the softs do last about 12 laps plus quality from the start of the race on that. That's heavy fuel load, so you'd expect them maybe to get about 14, 15 laps in the in the later stages of the race. Yeah, exactly. And well, they're going to have to just hope that they can drag those minions out. There's a few drivers. We've got Panda, T Mac, and Trin all going for a similar strategy. On board with the brown guy as well right now. He's had a pretty quiet race as Unhel takes another driver. This time it's Trin, and he is on a real charge in that racing point. You don't see too much overtaking. It's behind them, the brown guy and Shrimp. They're going side by side through turn one as well. The Williams on the inside. Looks like he's just about able to hold off Shrimp for P9. And, well, nicely done for the brown guy who is on these much older hards. But the ass, Shrimp's he's going to go though. back for it through sector one. This is a very risky place for it. Backs out. Yeah, Shrimp looking lively now. He's loving the outside of turn one, I'll tell you that much. First combined, now he's looking at the brown guy around, around turn one for P9. Well, whilst this is going on, a big shout out to a better bloke for the raiding party of 19. Welcome, thank you very much. It's... Round five of the MRL APAC division. We're at the Netherlands and well, Shrimp getting very close through the brown guy, but again, not gonna find any we haven't seen a move actually down into turn twelve yet, Seven. I gotta say I'm pretty surprised, but it hasn't ended well for a few drivers earlier in the week, so Yeah, exactly. It's turn twelve's just really tight, it just comes up on you, doesn't it? It's just that curb, that big curb that you have to ride over. You know, it just pushes you, understeers you to like the left, and if there's a car on the outside, it can really cause some troubles. But Trip again, looking around the outside of the brown guy, he's not going to get it done this time. But he's still, still looking. Can he get it through turns two and three this time? Really back out. He's still looking into turn four. Down the inside of the brown guy, they touch. Shrimp looking for superior exit, and he gets it. The brown guy is going to have to back out now. He's going to fall in line. Shrimp fighting hard, trying to make, get that move done. He does. It's not just P9 from the brown guy. Yeah, very, very nice driving from the two of them. The brown guy, he will be into the pit lane shortly. You've got to expect that, but still, Trin, uh, Shrimp sorry, needed to get that move done, and he's done just that, and you can see now how much he was just being held back that little bit. Stars now, he is going to show the move down into 
turn two that we were just asking about. And well, there it goes up into P5 for the Avatar. He didn't have the best middle section of the race, but in the no, latter third, he seems to be coming back alive. Like you said, not too confident on those dying tyres. And now Unhel around the outside of the final corner. You can see now Tumac into the pit lane. He will be getting onto some fresh sauce, but Unhel panders into the pit as well. So he's getting onto the sauce as well. Unhel into P5. He has had an absolutely superlative drive so far as it looks like eccentric. He's getting close to the rear of the brown guy. The other Willie is there. A panda just coming out of the pit lane side by side with these guys on the fresh softs. And he could be on some really nice points to aid him in that championship. Currently sitting in P3. And well, his championship rival, eccentric, is right there in front of him on the nine lap old hards. Yeah, exactly. The brown guy is doing an absolutely amazing job to hold off these drivers for as long as he can tell you what, the way he held off Shrimp for those two laps, now he's holding off Eccentric, just keeping him behind him. Eccentric's looking and looking to overtake, but he can't do anything. This is really playing into Red Panda's hand, as he said. Eccentric's rival at the moment. P3 in the championship is Panda. I believe P5 is Eccentric. They're just going at it now. Will Panda have a look for a movie? I don't think he should. It is turn 12. It's very tight. He's back there. If Eccentric goes for a dive down the inside of the brown guy, and he gets the move done by the looks of it. The brown guy looking to fight back with a switchback. Just doesn't have the traction on those 21 lap old hards. Now, what can Panda do? Panda needs to dispatch the brown guy really quickly here, and it looks like he will. Three turn 15, down the inside, easy as you like. He'll get the arrows as well, and he'll be able to stick onto the back of Eccentric. Well, I wonder whether every team orders came in there, both Williams drivers. The brown guy not making it too difficult as combined YouTuber under a little bit of pressure from the Renault behind him and combined yet to come into the pit lane still for those fresh socks. He's on 20 lap all hearts. Is he going to try and take these to the end? I wonder. You can see now the brown guy thrown well and truly out of the point. So maybe combined here is just going to try and take these hearts all the way to the tail end of this race. Seems a little bit risky, but definitely not impossible mm -hmm. as Remco. Just picked up a three second time penalty, so if those mediums weren't going to take him to the end, that three second time penalty could see him struggle. Especially if he gets a puncture in the last, it, it, even if it's the last lap, you could see stars if he catches nine seconds as those tires start to die out. We'll have to see how that goes as the brown guy has some sort of connection issue. Mm -hmm, exactly, Remco just has got to make some work here. He really needs to get a gap on stars if he wants the two stop, which is very possible around here. But it's hard to overtake as well. It's a short, it's a short pit lane. He might need to get about four seconds on stars at the moment to get that gap out to 16.8 seconds. Yeah, as close to that 17 second mark as possible. But over on combined, he's pitted lap one for those hards, and he's just gone all the way since that safety car. You might be able to make the oh, last... Oh, Panda very, into very the hard. wall! And there's a massive, massive run of down. I think he's going to see a tire front wing there on the Williams trying to get past Eccentric. And here's a VST. Oh. I'll tell you what. I reckon he's just gone too hot to turn three. He expected too much of the tires under braking or just before braking. And that's just sent him into that right-hand side wall of turn four. Well, that is very, very unfortunate. Be very hard, especially when you... Yeah. yeah, it's very unfortunate indeed. But yeah, just just to know, Arnhel's really caught to the back of stars right now. Arnhel on those seven-lap old mediums. We'll see if he can make them last. And oh, Remco gets a drive-through penalty. That's big. Well, that's game over for the Red Bull. There is no yeah. way he can sit on the podium now. Surely, Arnhel and stars, like you said... Both here going to take full advantage of this because they're going to close in. It's not a long pit stop like you've been saying. But as these two close in, that three second time penalty on Remco's car. As the two go side by side into turn one, it starts with Unhel. Unhel just teleporting oh, in front. No. Stars is having a huge amount of connection issues in the Alpha Tauri. Oh, that's, oh, that's not what you like to say. It's, that was looking to be a great battle right there. And it's just gets him what seems to be stuttering. He just pulls him back by a second on him. Yeah, he won't be happy with that. He'll he might it's, it's cool over that. He has had a lot of connection issues in the past two weeks, but I'll tell you what, he's driving well today. Aside from the connection issue, he is driving well. So he's just gotta keep his head up. Yeah, absolutely. And the podium's still on the table for him here. Unhel again on this risky soft medium right now. Remco as well. His tires are older than Unhel's and he has that three second penalty, so there's still 
every opportunity for Stars to finish on this podium. Like you said, he just needs to remain calm. According to Freeware on the avatar pit wall, that there is just sort of his game all tab. That's what's caused that sort of lag switch there for him. Angel as well, using up a lot of ERS. He is really low on the battery, 5% for the racing point. So he's just trying to break that DRS. He has actually broken the one second boundary, but starts dancing as eccentric and shrimp. There goes side by side through the turn one. Shrimp up the Ooh. inside of the Ferrari. Not quite finding the exit though. A little bit of loss of traction. The Haas just securing the position though. Yeah, Eccentric was just turning into Shrimp when Shrimp had track position down the inside of him at the apex. So, a bit interested to see if Eccentric was trying to get the switch back on him and just didn't judge how well Shrimp pulled the car up into turn one. Yeah, a little bit of a news as well. The brown guy having some sort of power cut as it appears. Cello into the pit stop, what pit lane once again for the McLaren driver. Really oh. hasn't gone well for the McLarens. Yeah, exactly. Trin, Trin was just catching T Mac there for P9, but he had a bit of a moment through turn seven. That's what I was having a. That's what I was having a moment over. Sorry, turn eight, I should say. Yeah, he nearly lost it on the left hand side. It was a bit of a scary moment. Well, there are actually a few penalties, Seb. So let's have a quick look at what we've got as eccentric on the rear of Shrimp might have a run down into turn one. And the Ferrari finds the space on the inside. There's a little bit of contact between the two. And it's a big slide for the Ferrari. That is not what he wants to be doing. No damage, luckily, well, be careful, for Kendrick. him. And yeah, he has to let everyone yeah. by. And there goes Trin up into P9. It could be a nice finish for Trin. Three second time penalties for both Not So Masoom and T Mac. It's Trin well and truly within that window for T Mac. And not too far off of Not So Masoom as well. Yeah, I'm expecting, I'm expecting that between Shrimp and Eccentric to be looked at. I'm expecting Shrimp to get a penalty there. Eccentric had 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 position on on Shrimp down the inside, so Shrimp really needed to give him respect and just didn't. He just turned straight across him, and yeah, Eccentric nearly coming across T Mac and Trinu are starting to build a decent battle here. Well, here we go. The closing six laps of the race, not too long to go at all as Stars is flying down towards turn one. DRS enabled and he could really rejoin, regain the place on Unhal. The hard tyres will definitely be feeling more comfortable as the brown guy seems to have power back. So I'm not sure if you can get him an invite here back to try and get him into the lobbies. But everyone flying down into these closing stages of the race. We've got a lot of penalties picking up. Trent does not have any penalties, but everyone else above it, three seconds apiece. So, it won't be a huge amount of positions gained at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Just trying to get the brown guy back into the lobby. At the moment. Wavies on the rear of Eccentric, and it looks like Cello might have had an issue here. Not quite sure. Again, he's already got damage on the front one of that McLaren. We just saw him come into the pit lane a lap or so ago, and now already damage on the McLaren. Really struggling, but he hasn't given up here. You've got to love that fighting spirit coming out of the McLaren driver, but super, super unfortunate turn of events here this evening. As Wavy's still looking to try and hunt down Eccentric, but his tyres, his penalty might prevent him from doing so. Trin, on the other hand, penalty free. The three drivers ahead of him all have three seconds to their names. The Alfa Romeo now hunting down the Haas driver of T-Mac. And if he can get past T-Mac here, he might just be able to get into the three second window of not so much soon for seventh place on the checkered flag. Yeah, these, these two, Piddle late, T-Mac and Shrimp, Piddle late onto these softs and then they've been making just some, some gains on Soma Soom and Shrimp. Shrimp obviously with that instant with Eccentric, which will most likely be looked at, you'd think. And right now, just gaining and gaining. Trin probably playing the long game at the moment, just letting T-Mac drag him along, save that ERA. And play that, play, let this play into his hands by the three laps to go in the race. And that's Cello playing in the pits. Just, just hasn't been a good 
good day for it, has it? No, absolutely. It's, you know, I don't think anyone will be too surprised to see that retirement in the pit lane. And, well, like you said, just super, super unfortunate for him. It's been just going from bad to worse. It was a bad start off the line. And now, you know, he's finally called it quits here. As the Renault of Not So Assume looking up at the inside of Shrimp. Not going to find it, though. And he's going to be careful of the other has behind him. They're going to keep battling out. Trin here is going to be absolutely loving the fact that all these guys ahead are battling because he could see himself gain a lot more points here in that Alfa Romeo if he can close up to all of these guys with the penalties. Ben the Bear lapping the brown guys a short lap, so not too often that you see people getting lapped, but Ben the Bear has just been on another level today. And Remco as well, dropping off the back of Mikael, has, is, is just completely on the back. Haven't really been looking at that front three all too much at the moment, but those tyres really starting to die out for him. He hasn't got a puncture yet, but we could still see those mediums pop before the end. Yeah, exactly. Right now, Trin is just, just floating between that P7 and 6 range. That that time gap is just, just sitting between 2.9 and 3 seconds, so this is he should be able to get it on the soft tyres, but we will see. He does, have, he does have to make a bit of work and get a little bit of luck that these guys keep battling. Hopefully his soft don't die off. They shouldn't die off, but I hope. Meanwhile, Stars is just within the DRS range of Unhel, who has a penalty. Well, ahead, the battle is still most certainly going on. We've got a VSC, though. What's caused that? Having a look at the track map, no one seems to be moving slower than others. It's eccentric, according to the chat. The, the Ferrari into the pit lane. That would explain that one. And yeah, this VSC, indeed. look how much this has brought Trin into the opportunity to get these guys on the three second time it's really closed up this gap from sixth through ninth and this could really see the Alfa Romeo gain a huge number of places when that checker flag is waved when these penalties are applied he just needs to keep his end of the bargain free let's see if these guys they're all still on three second penalties eccentric the only one with a five second with the black and white flag next to their name mm -hmm. yeah it looks like looks like this VSC has really helped out Trin just get that bit closer to to um shrimp in terms of that time gap looks like he should have that p6 by now unless like you said he gets that it's a time penalty and coming through they'll be crossing for lap 32 as they come across the line it seems though that Sh uh, t max sorry hasn't got the best of exits out of that final corner shrimp as uh, trin as well just struggling to keep up that gap already starting to extend a little bit as the two hard runners are seeming a little bit better. You've got to remember the softs are going to die out. There is Shrimp has gone very, very deep into turn four. The Renault is going to take full advantage of that. Very, very nicely executed move from him. And if he can run away here, 17 lap old hards, he should have a little bit of pace. The, the pace isn't going to be too different. 17 lap old hards compared to 9 lap old mediums in a few laps time when both tyres are aging. The hards obviously aging much, much better. And that is exactly what the Renault driver needed. Let alone what Trin needed. There's a lot of drivers are sliding Ooh. coming through turn 10. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it'd be wiser, Shrimp. Let T-Mac just buy here. Try and get onto the back of not so much Zoom. But looks like Zoom is just kind of darted away at this moment. T-Mac had a bit of a stutter here. Yeah, yeah he's dropped off his glitch. Yeah. yeah. Eccentric's crashed. <laughs> And it's a safety car. Right in the middle of the track, and it's a late, late, late safety car. Lap 33. This is pretty much as late as he gets for a safety car. Eccentric's just lost it out of turn 8 into that wall, exactly where I believe it was Eccentric who crashed in qualifying there. Yeah, it, it looks like looks like we're going to have a one lap safety car. I'm not sure we'll get a lot of the field bunching up, but. If if we can see the top, top eight just bunch up, Trin could be on for P4 here, I believe. He really could be. You know, Remco, Angel, Somasum, all have penalties, and he's that's three people. He's sitting pretty nice in P7 right now. Stars looks like he'll get that P3 from him, from uh, Remco and Angel. Yes, Making a great tape for Alphatarix. 
Yeah, it'll make it a great day for Alvatari. Really just extending that championship lead they have over Mercedes. And they've been the bear racing today. No captain of gold. He's been missing for the past three rounds, I believe. Well, Mikael is bent. Going for the Zos Remco as well. Unhel, everyone here looking like they're going to hop into the pit lane for the soft compound of tyre. Fresh softs for what will be a presumably a two lap shootout, if not one singular lap of racing, depending on when the race control brings in the safety car. You can see there, Stars has got out. He's just ahead of the Renault who hasn't come into the pit lane. You've got not so much. Trin hasn't come into the pit lane as well. Is that a mistake for the Alfa Romeo driver? Staying out on those 11 lap old softs, he's not going to be able to stay within. Yeah, it's just the penalty range of everyone else. It, it's just, it's. I think he's weighing up whether this safety car's coming in this lap or it's going to stay out for one more lap and we'll have one lap of racing. Because if he pits, he's going to lose all that time. Yeah, it is coming in. So he really, he really needs to make some time up if he wants any chance of that P4, that top five finish. But he should be able to get there before that safety car comes in at this rate. It's not like those soft tyres will get a puncture or anything by the end of um, this this race. But they might, they may fall off if, if they have, they have um, they have got a bit of a cooldown. They might get a little bit of a cooldown in these last two. Got oh my god, he got a penalty, pushing too hard on the safety car, through turn twelve. He cut too much of inside the turn 12 unicorn. Well, that is so, so unfortunate. Stars now, the only one who's going to gain Emmins as well. Can see himself jump up the points. Ben's restarted this race. Remco right between Mikau and Anhel. That's not Mikau, sorry. That is the brown guy's AI. Can Anhel find a way up the inside of the Red Bull driver? He's finding not enough space. It looks like Anhel has had a spin into the wall. Oh. And there he goes. And now that is going to promote Stars up into P4 already. Trin's up into 5th place. And to be honest, that penalty yeah. might not cost him too much here. Yeah, it just might have just cost him one position. There was a good move down the inside of Soma Soom. It's very opportunistic. Soma Soom was kind of lagging back behind Stars and Remco in Unhel while in P6. And that's just gone and cost him. He might have had a chance of that P6, but looks like that's going to fade away by right now. Tiamat could even snatch it from him right now looking in that P7, but... We'll see what happens. There's actually rain. It's it's raining. Oh, wait, there is. I don't think it's going to really <laughs> cause any impact, but it is actually raining in the last couple of laps here. Rain is starting to fall. Remco right now, he needs to break this three second gap between him and Stars. Stars right now within DRS. But, well, lots of us team, 20 lap old hards. Trend, T Mac, 12 lap old softs. Like attraction, if this track gets even a little bit damp, they could really be struggling. But everyone on these fresh softs shouldn't be feeling too bad on this final lap of the race. But yeah, well, Remco, I think he's going to find two tenths. Just imagine if this rain came about three laps earlier and that safety car came out. Oh my word, this that could have that could have really elevated this race to the next level in terms of entertainment value. Right now, look, everything looks pretty stagnant. Doesn't look like we're going to get a lot of moving around apart from Stars and Remco for that podium position. Stars just seems to keep within that three seconds, as we said before. Doesn't look like there's anything else happening down the rest of this, this APAC division. Not so soon, really struggling, it would seem, on these hard compound tyres, just sliding around. And that rain is coming down, the track's still looking pretty dry. At least visually, no tyres, no, no water being sprayed up by the tyres as they come through into the final sector for the last time this evening. But it will be Ben the Bear for the third week in a row, picking up P1 around a race circuit he wasn't too confident about. He crashed in qualifying, as did Mikau. He takes P2. Remco's going to take P3, but it's going to be Stars promoted on penalties after that late safety car. Reeled him straight in. Trin's got a five second unserved penalty, so I don't know what he got that for. Maybe he spent on the safety car or something, but well, he's dropped down to P6 as after what looked like it was going to be a P5, but well, it could have been a P4 for him had he not picked up those penalties. And Wavy. Do a quick check under five seconds. I, I honestly don't know what that is. He got it on the last lap for something. Um, oh no, sorry, that would have been earlier in the race. I reckon he might have been a 
time penalty in the pit lane. Spinning in the pits. Apparently it was a collision the under safety car. But still, he picks up driver of the day, regardless. But here we go. Ben the Bear on the podium. He'll be happy with that one. Surrounded by both Alpha Tauri drivers, both Mikel and Stars. They will be very, very happy and extend their lead at the top of the constructor standings. But Ben the Bear, he's found his form from earlier on in the start of this season. And he's really, really showing his colours here in the last three races. And another win for him is going to see him very, very happy. We'll get interviews with the top three in just a moment. But it's Ben the Bear from pole to first. Mikhail from third to second. Stars, he picks up a place as well, fourth to third. Then we have Remco. The safety car might have saved him from a puncture, which would have seen him drop. But he still picks up P4 at his home Grand Prix. I'm sure he would have much rather been on the podium, though. Not so much assume in the Renault in fifth. Trin from 16th to 6th in that Alfa Romeo. Wavy in 7th place, the only reserve on today's grid. Shrimp in 8th, T-Mac in ninth, and Emmons rounds up the points, finishes in 10th. Then we have combined YouTuber Unhel Panda, and the brown guy finishes in P14. Eccentric retired just 3 laps from the end of this race in the Ferrari. And Cello, well, he retired in the pit lane after a string of bad luck in that race. But what a race it was, Seb. What are your thoughts as we just get ready for some interviews here with the drivers who finished on that podium. I just would have liked to see that rain come just three, five laps earlier, you know? It really would have been interesting to see what would happen with strategy with that safety car coming out late. Would have Could have really, really uh, made an interesting result. But anyway, congratulations to Ben the Bear. He may, may have been unconfident coming into the race, but you know, he's got nothing to be unconfident about with a first place finish. No, I'm pretty sure a grand slam as well. Fastest lap and pole position in qualifying. Yeah, a really, really just strong race from him. And like I said, he just seemed super unconfident today coming into the race, but he certainly wasn't. But we'll get an interview first and foremost with P3, which was indeed Stars. Although, there we are. Stars, congratulations. The podium... How does it feel for the first time this season? Uh, unicorn. Great. Honestly, absolutely ecstatic. Uh, I'm happy. I know the Terry boys are happy. It was great. Great showing there. Uh, absolutely amazing race. Loved it, brother. Loved it. Well, we saw you, you know, on that opening lap. A brilliant, brilliant start off the line. Got straight past Mikhail. Then at the end of the soft stint, just didn't seem to be going your way. What was happening on those tyres? Was it, was it just the tyres just not wearing as well as, you know, your teammate Remco's as well? I think it's honestly just due to the fact that I didn't put a lot of practice in for this race and I only did the first couple of laps. So I wasn't used to the tyre um, degradation towards the end of the stint. So I really did struggle there. I think I was losing about three tenths a lap to Angel behind me. So... I was thankful that I got to come in, put the fresh hards on, and um, yeah, go to the end. Yeah, and then obviously that last minute safety car. I don't think anyone was expecting it, but obviously Remco's penalty. What, what was going through your head in those last few laps? Obviously, you knew you had to stay within those three seconds, but just how much pressure was there? You know, were you putting on yourself? What was just going through your head in those few last few moments? Honestly, I was a bit nervous, and when the safety car brought, got brought out, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if, if I should just stay out because it was only going to be out for one lap, and, yeah, it was a late call and came to the pits, and then, yeah, I just knew. I was just like, I, I've, I know I've got the pace to stay within three seconds. Um, obviously, I've got all the resources, so just go for it, go for gold, and hopefully uh, hopefully bring home a podium, and, yeah, yeah it's, good to, it's good to be back on the podium, that's for sure. Yeah, well, your first podium of the season, you know, haven't scored too many points in the, the first few races, but there's this, you know, Improve your confidence going into the next few rounds of the season. You know, hopeful that you can finish a little bit higher up the table than you are at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, obviously, I missed the first couple of races, and then I had internet issues uh, last race. I was, I think, I was on for a P4, P5 from back of the grid, and I had all those internet issues. So, it's finally good to not have internet issues. My game did alt tab, and I did lose a spot, but that's okay. You know. So no, it's um, it's it's good confidence. So hopefully going into the next week, uh, we can we can back it up. Awesome. Well, thank you, stars, and we look forward to interviewing you again when you inevitably get on the podium once more. 
Hey, cheers, boys. Thanks. All Good right. Mate. Seb, I'll let you take this one. As I'm not sure if Ben the Bear's around, but it is Mick out again on the podium for the fifth time this season. G'day, Mick. How you going? Uh, I'm doing well. That was an exciting race, actually. Um, I'm I'm really happy about that one, and no, it was a great great result for the team as well. So very happy at the moment. You know, another podium is a good job. Just want to touch base on your the first stint you had at the start. You know, you got caught behind stars at the start. Just want to know what was the communication going on there. How was that going? Were you in any form of panic at that time? You know, or did you have the confidence that your pace would pull through later on in the race? Uh, I knew coming into this that my pace on the softs wasn't uh, as strong as my pace on the hards. Um, you know, the practice race that I did uh, that I did during the week. Uh, showed some very, very strong pace on the hearts. Um, so I was just basically trying to conserve the sauce as much as I could because I had a bit more wear than the others around me. Uh, Stars got off to a very, very good start, as he of as he often does. Um, but you no, know, there wasn't any panic on, you know, in the cockpit. It was just, you know, head down, just stay focused. And, you know, once uh, there was a threat of Remco getting out of our DRS, uh, Styles was going to let me through anyway because he knew that uh that I was faster than him uh, today. So that was all. That was for the as for the communication side of things. Yeah, good job anyway. Um, that's that's three wins on the trot for though for your rival Ben the Bear at the moment. Just want to know if there's any plans at the moment or anything you you are thinking of doing in order to try and uh try and just stem his flow at the moment. Uh, ben is a very very fast driver. Um, definitely one of the fastest in the world. Um, so beating him will be a challenge. Um, but you know, I think my strongest, uh, well, trait, if you want to call it that, is my consistency. I mean, I've been in the top two every single race so far this season, and I don't have any plans of stopping that run anytime soon. So um, yes, Ben is a very fast driver. It will be difficult to, to take the fight to him at Spain, which I know is one of his best tracks. Um, so it will be difficult uh, next week, but you know, we'll do all we can as a team to really uh, bring the fight to them. And yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Mikhail. Congratulations on P2 once again. Yeah, I just have a message from from Ben as well. Yeah, unfortunately, he has to he had to bail on the the post race interviews. But you know, uh, he's very happy with the the win today. He told me, and uh, he'll keep trying to close the gap to myself. That's the message I'll, he asked me to pass on to to both you two and uh, those on the stream as well. All right, well, thanks for that, Mikhail, and once again, have a have a great night. And congratulations on P two. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Guys. All right. Well, that just about wraps everything up here for APAC. A very very dramatic race. But like you said, Seb, it could have been so much more dramatic if that rain had come just a few laps earlier. We haven't seen rain at all this week and well the game teased us with a little bit there but it's not going to be any other thoughts coming out of that race well not really just i was very happy with the racing i saw to be honest with you it was very cool to see these guys try and race as cleanly as possible not a lot of incidents apart from over that one with shrimp and eccentric into turn one and the one at the start of the race between possibly cello and wavy from memory but other than that it's a good race yeah, some really, really nice driving. And thank you, everyone, for hanging out in the chat with us, you know, watching along uh, throughout that entire race. A very, very, or just very dramatic, awesome race. Again, a big thank you to a better bloke for the raid earlier on in the stream. And then another massive shout-out to our partners, Next Level Racing. They're doing amazing things for the sim racing community, trying to get it to grow, and they build some awesome sim rigs. So if you're looking to get some more... Entry level or advanced level rigs. Go give them a shout out and check out in the chat. Exclamation mark NLR. But that is it for APAC this week. We'll be back same time, same place next Sunday. And if you're looking for more MRL action, well, for those of us in Europe, that's 8pm GMT, 9pm CET. Or if you're in America and up really early, then 3pm Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be back with the last bit of Netherlands action. Zandvoort returns for the F2 action. That will be myself and Alex Biddo commentating for that one. But until next week, and until then, 
we'll see you on the next one. Thank you again, Seb, for joining me in the commentary box. But that's it, and we'll see you in the next one.